Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so, I, my name is Simon, and this is Kai, and we are tutors for, for graphics this term. Basically, the point of this um, short video is to talk about the minimum necessary things that you need to know with respect to um, the C++ language. So basically, because 6771 is not a prerequisite for this course, um, we had to choose a subset of the C++ language that um, you know, most people would be able to like grasp fairly quickly. So that way we could you know, delve more into graphical things. So um, basically, the format of this is that Kai will be will be like in a lab situation and Kai will be like a tutor who's helping a student, which will be played by myself. And the idea is, is that we'll be writing a very simple program, um, which we'll explain here in a second. And Kai will sort of be like directing and explaining um, everything as we go along. Does that sound good, Kai? Did I miss anything? No, that sounds good. That's All right. Theme. Cool. So I'm going to share my screen and um, let's just let's just do this. So what's the program that we got here, Kai? Um, we will be implementing a fold function. So if you don't know what fold is, it's kind of like um, reduce. So it will take in a list and um, it can take in a function so it knows what to do with uh, the list and then it will produce one single value. So if it's a list of integers, it will produce a single integer. And if it's a list of doubles, for example, it will return a double. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, that sounds good. So like, for instance, if we applied fold to this list and we had like a plus as the operation, then we kind of get the sum, which is what's that, 14? Yep. And um, say we had the same list, but as doubles, maybe we'll make the list a little bit more interesting and add like 4.5. And instead of plus, we did multiplication, then what would we get? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do that. Yeah. So you get the point. Um, yeah. yeah. So we'll start with sum and do other oper operations later. So we'll default to sum. All right. Cool. So just like right off the bat, right? Um, this looks somewhat different to see. So, like, I mean, let's just talk about maybe the headers first. Like, how do we kind of arrange um, like C source files? Um, okay. First of all, it's, as you can see from the file names, it's not .h anymore, it's .hpp, that's the convention, and then uh, .cpp, obviously. Um, so yeah, in our main .cpp, that's our main function, and we have an include folder that has the folder .hpp, which is our header file. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool, pp for plus plus, naturally. Um, and so like, what, what's this namespace thing? Because don't we in C just like use these header guards and then we're all like, okay, why, why do we have this like this namespace, these namespace things? Um, I think these namespaces are just, um, it's actually, yeah, it's only in C++, so it doesn't have it in C. Uh, basically, uh, it just kind of a way to modularize your code. So um, yeah, those functions in the namespace, it doesn't, uh, it won't pollute other namespaces if you have the same name of the function uh, with the same functions. Yeah, right? yeah, that's based. That's 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 actually hundred percent correct. So, um, like in C, right, everything gets added to the global namespace. So if you have name collisions, it's last right wins, kind of like how it is in Python when you do a uh, import everything with with a star, um, or in Java when you just like import Java dot lang dot star, and you know, everything gets added to the global namespace. But in C++, we have a way to explicitly namespace things, which is cool. Um, and you don't even need to name a name namespace, which is kind of interesting, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. So yeah, I mean, just like we, we said before, we're going to be implementing fold here. And um, already we kind of get something new. I mean, namespaces are new, but like even more new with C++ in that we actually have two functions with the same name. Um, that only vary based on their parameter types and um, output types. So like, what, what, what is this guy? What, what's happening here? Oh, okay. So this is just function overloading. Um, you should have already seen that in Java in comp 2511. Um, yeah, so if you can have this function, you can have functions with the same name, but different uh, number of parameters or different types parameters, but return values don't matter, just the parameters. Yeah, that's right. Um, 
and here, as you can see, we have some C++ kind of types here. Um, basically, this is an equivalent of a Java list um, of ints, and this is a list of doubles. And um, unlike in Java, these, these types are completely separate, um, unlike generics, which do type erasure. Anyway, so basically, we have two versions of fold. We need to implement both, and we need to get started. So let's, let's just go ahead and um, maybe let's quickly since we just talked about namespace let's quickly talk about what the colon colon is oh yes that's a good point so right here i'm going to just create a list of um a list of numbers just to start off with so um let's say i don't know what the type is i'm just going to say this is going to be my int list and it's going to be equal to this kind of interesting um initializer let's just say it's one two three for now right so I need to give this a type, right? But like, what type am I going to give? So this is kind uh, of like getting into the standard library, right? So, so it's a vector, right? It's a vector, that's right. So let's say vector of int. And basically, these angle brackets, it's not that it's not too important. Basically, C++ has a notion of templates, which is um, a way of um, which is the same as generics, basically. Basically the same as generics, that's right. So it's just like type parameterization. Essentially, when you want a vector of something, you just open up these angle brackets and put in the thing. But as you can see, I'm getting a like a squiggle here. What's what's why is I'm, why am I getting a squiggle? What am I doing wrong? No template. Uh, can you hover over it? No template named vector. Yeah. Did I mean stood vector? Oh, thank you. So stood vector with double colon is um, so. STD is a namespace uh, defined in the C++ standard. Um, so yeah, so we need to, so when we want to access a function or a define something that's defined in a namespace, we need to do namespace uh, colon colon uh, the thing. Right. So, right. Like, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so if we want to call our function fold, we do need to do CPP colon colon CPP one oh one colon colon fold. Okay, okay. Let's try let's just like put a dummy implementation in for fold then. So fold takes it returns an int and the name with the namespace is CPP one oh one, which is the namespace, and then this colon colon and oh okay, I'm getting IntelliSense already, so I can just say int and it filled in. Okay, cool. And it takes in a vector of nums. For now, let's just return zero and we'll fill it in in a second yeah. all right cool so that um, makes okay, sense so, okay yeah so have you noticed anything different that you haven't seen in c so if, in the function parameters yeah yeah let's um let me just fill this in and let's take a look see at this so first thing i noticed here is const and i think this is already in c right like in c strings are const char stars right constant yeah, arrays um, of characters or arrays of constant yeah, characters yeah, if you come from 2521.5.11 and if you've been looking at man pages, you should have seen them uh, everywhere in man pages. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, const is fairly easy to, uh, to understand. Okay, yeah, basically, so yeah, basically, when you take, uh, when the function parameter is uh, const, you cannot change it in the function. Right. Okay, cool. Um, so, Got a constant vector double. That's cool. And then uh, we're taking the address of a uh, function parameter here. What is this? Um, it's a reference. Um, so it's not a it's not the address of operator. It's kind of slightly different. Um, in okay. C plus plus, there's a notion called uh, references, uh -huh. and uh, basically it's kind of like the address. But <laughs> um, Simon, do you want to explain this? Yeah, yeah, cool. So basically, references are uh, they're they're literally pointers, with two main exceptions. The first exception is that unlike pointers, and much like Java or C sharp or any other language that is reference based, um, the references are automatically dereferenced for you. So what that means is you don't have to use the um, Star. arrow operator yeah or the star that's right so you don't need to use the dereference operator or the member access operator as you would in c with references you can just use the dot operator so like for instance nums has some functions that i can use and i don't have to use a arrow i can just use dot 
and I can get the get the stuff because it's being automatically dereferenced. So basically, nums is kind of like a is basically a pointer to a uh, constant vector, but um, I don't need to use these syntax to um, access things inside. I can just use dot. Cool. So that's the first thing, and then the second thing is that references, and this is a C plus plus only thing. References cannot be rebound. So what that means is, let's say I have an in here, and then I have an in reference j. I cannot do this, and I cannot do this. References must be bound to a valid value upon their creation. So I can only do this. And now j references i, and whenever I use j, it will actually access i automatically for us. And and if you create another uh, variable, another integer, like in k is equal to one, you cannot do. Oh uh, yeah, if you do j is equal to k, it doesn't actually change where the pointer is pointing to, but it changes the value underneath. Oh, true. So now, yeah, so now i has become one, and j is still referencing i. It doesn't reference k. Yeah, that's right. That's right as well. So these are the main two differences, um, and. In C++, the main way that we pass things around is through references. So it's a fairly, you'll see this a lot, even if you don't quite understand to begin with, but probably if you've done um, Java or any like Python even, then you've worked with references before, but um, they're very powerful for passing things around. Cool. Yeah. And we usually attach const to, uh, yeah, to our function parameters if you don't intend to change it. And for pure functions, we don't change it. So a lot of times you'll see const references uh, as a thing for function parameters, right? Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Actually, that has a name, if I'm not mistaken. That's called const correctness. And um, I suppose mm -hmm. the idea is, is that any place that we're not going to be modifying a value, that we should make it const because you know, it's like a contract. I promise that I'm not going to modify this thing. And um, basically you can trust that I, I won't, you know, break yeah. this. And you, yeah, and if you try to do norms dot, I don't know, append or push back a new thing, it should, compiler should um, try to uh, prevent you from doing that. That's right. And In fact, if I even back. try to uh, push, wait, push, push back, <laughs> this is what happens yeah. when you use Python too much. If I try to do norms of push back, you can see my editor here is like, there's no matching function for call to push back because it's not viable. Basically, method is not const, based in, which is to say that I cannot modify a yeah. constant thing. So. Yeah, so pushback can only be operated on non-const references. But then now, but now we have the const references, so we can't call pushback, basically. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So let's just kind of recap what we've gone through quickly. So we can see we have these namespaces, and these are ways to uh, you know, modularize our code, prevent name collisions, and hard to track bugs. So that's cool. We have the way to access things inside namespaces with this colon colon. So that's cool. Um, we've been introduced to some standard library types already. We've got std vector, and we'll see um, some more in the future, in the near future. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. we've, and we've gone through const correctness. So now might as well let's make our in list const because we will not be modifying. It's just a input. Oh yeah, that's true. Let's do that. And um, while we're at it, let's also, can we add const anywhere else? Not yet, not just yet. Cool. Yeah, no. um, and we've also covered static polymorphism, which is something that you may or may not see a lot of, um, but you need to know that it exists. And I think one of the main places you'll see it is in GLSL because they use function overloading there implicitly for some, I think, some of the texture functions and image functions and stuff like this. So that is all looking good. Um, there's a few more things that we haven't talked about just in like kind of the setup to this. So the first thing to notice here is, um, you know, this is somewhat interesting. Can't we just do this? What's, what's the difference between these two things, Kai? Um, so, in C++, we can include all the C headers for back, backwards compatibility, but we have to change, uh, remove the dot .h and then add a C in front of it. Oh, so that's, okay. Um, including the C++ version of it. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah, um, so for example, for ex another example would be uh, math.h. We'll okay. just include C math. 
Okay, CMath, and that we here we have all of the regular stuff. So I should have something like what? Stood um, R cos? Is that not a uh, math function? Sine cosine, sine cosine square root. Yeah. Right, so their square root. Which we'll be using a lot in our matrix transformation later on. Right, right. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have the difference there um, with the C headers. So we can use all of the C um, library, which is good. Mm -hmm. But also we have some C++ specific headers here. So vector, I think, makes sense, right? We need our uh, type definition for std vector. So that's inside a vector. We have a what seems to be a um, C++ standard string type. So that's good to see. We don't have to work with raw char stars anymore. And we also have this IO stream thing uh, what's inside of here that's of importance, Kai? Um, so I was stream has C out and C in. So C out is, can be used to replace printf. So you don't have to ever deal with, um, formatted, uh, printing. So let's just C out in list, um, uh, first, let's see out the first thing in this, in, in list. Okay. Okay. So yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so this is interesting. So we're already, we're already using a separate uh, operator, aren't we? Oh uh, yeah. So um, that less than less than is an output operator. Uh -huh. Yeah. So basically, okay. you just need to do it with CR. So cool. stuff. Let's not get yeah. Let's not get into the details. No, no. I mean, it makes sense, right? It's, it's like an yeah. arrow. It's like we're shooting stuff from the right to the left. The very yeah, and you shoot it to C out, which is the output stream. Right. Um, and I think by default, this is just going to be a terminal, right? This is just stood out. Like yeah. literally stood out, right? The like three primary file descriptors that um exist on yeah, the yeah. computer. Yeah. And um, how I, do I and, mm -hmm. uh, put just put the new line first? And we go we can also uh send it to send an error. Um so stu error, which is the other uh, file descriptor is e c e c e r r c error. And let's change this to maybe yeah, to one. Yeah. So by default they should both get just into the terminal. Let's run this. All right, let's find out. Let me just fill in this stub so that the uh, compiler doesn't scream at us. And sure. let's build this. Can I build it? Did it work? It worked. Let's run it now. Yay. Hey, so look at that. Cool. So you can yeah, see. Oh, it's, it's even red. It even tells you it's red. So that's going to the uh, standard error, I'm guessing. That's right. This is the stood error one. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So this is really interesting, right? Because now we can just like have a sort of type safe way of outputting to the terminal all of our yeah, stuff. Yeah, you never have to ever do uh percent D or just thinking about what type it is and find the correct uh formatting thing. That's right. So it you, you get kind of this automatic conversion to string, which is really nice. All right, cool. So um and we can even so on the strut string type. If I, what I can do is I can say std string and um, I don't know, maybe message one equals oh, this yeah. message. Yep. And this is really nice. So basically, we're just taking our string here and sticking inside of message one. And I should be able to just replace this with message one now as well. And then let's make that const as well. Oh, okay, sure. Because we're not modifying it, right? Yep. If I rerun, it should automatically rebuild and run and I believe we get a different output this time. This is interesting. Why did I get a different output? Uh, CL one and zero. Let's try running it know. again. Okay. Same thing. So you printed one and then two first and then printed zero and one. Yeah. I'm legitimately confused as to why this is doing this. <laughs> let's try like reordering this now. Move, yeah let's move the order that's strange same thing yeah, that, that makes I... sense but then why okay <laughs> oh, oh now okay it's, now it's fine. i don't know. I don't know what happened weird stuff man weird stuff <laughs> i mean it's possible what could have been happening there was some compiler magic with basic reordering of instructions um that's what i that's my guess um, yeah, C++ compilers are magic cool, for sure. Yeah, here because our observable side effects are kind of not 
um, related to each other. The compiler is technically free to reorder instructions, but that's neither here nor there. The main point is that we can, um, you know, stick things out to std out, std error whenever we have a. Yeah, so if you ever want to print an error out, put it to C error, which you will do a lot in um, when you are like compiling shaders and stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's also C in, but we're not any file or like reading from the command line stuff will provide for you. Um, yeah. Or you can learn yourself. So, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and um, actually, and actually implement this. Do some stuff. Yeah, let's get rid of these for now. And then, so we have our int list. Um, what do we need to do first? Well, I guess we, what we can do is we can just like constant our result, maybe yep. fold one is going to be, well, CPP 101, right? Yep. Fold, and I can one, pass two. in the int list. Yeah, pass in the int list. And that should, so if we see, if we, if we um, stood out fold one, that should be zero. That's our stop, stop value. Let's go. Indeed. Okay. So yeah, let's implement um, fold. All right. So how do I do this? Uh, let, let's just let's just keep it simple and do a for loop instead of uh, recursion, right? Shall we? Yeah, that sounds easy to me. So let's see. Here. All right. So oh, okay. Let's actually introduce the four range loops. Um, you, you already seen that in Python, Java, but. C++ has it, so use it uh, because it's a vector, so we can do four. Um, mm -hmm. let's, let's do uh, const int num. Well, actually, you know what? You can even have, like, we can make this a reference, can't we? Because yeah, we're we can make going to be talking about it. Yeah, and then num, num, you're missing the variable name. Indeed, I am. Yep, and colon, the iterable. So it, it looks just like Java. Um, cool. And then, Except of course, that we had to explicitly get yeah. into reference semantics, but okay, cool. Yep. Um, we don't have to do that, but we, we're just trying to do, use it, what we, use what we just learned. Mm. Um, okay. So now we can just, um, we, we might need a result variable. Before. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So let's call this, uh, what's a typical name? Maybe like turtle. Actually, we can call it some, can't we? I'll, I'll, keep, I'll call it turtle. Turtle, yeah. Um, okay, notice this is not const because we actually need to modify total. So total plus equal num. Okay. Sounds good. And then I guess at the end we just return total, right? Yep. All right. Awesome. Okay, That's really simple. Now, yeah, hypothetically, oh, yeah, let's run it. That's a good, good point. Yeah, just make sure it works. Should return six. Hey. Awesome. Yay. All right, cool. Um, now, Let's, how would we do this in the C, in a, as a C loop? Same thing, right? Except maybe what we need to do is. Uh, yeah, we can do that in um, in the double, in the oh. double version of it. Yeah, let's okay. just implement it a different way. Yeah, using yep. C loop. Okay, well, let's just copy this code because everyone knows copy and pasting is how you program. Yep. And then we'll get rid of that. So now my turtle isn't going to be an int, it's going to be a double. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll yeah, so if you want to do this C way, so three things in the for loop. Um, we, oh yeah, we need a we need an int for in i for okay the, the counter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, in, what we need in, to do uh, i less than so norms dots. Let's see what function size. Okay. Then. Yeah. So that's really it, this is one of the best things about um, the stood vector types, and in that instead of working with like raw arrays, right? These vectors they know how big they are. So, and so do strings. Strings know how big they are. So what that means is that we can just, uh, you know, yep. ask it how big it is instead of having to track length and or, like pointer. Or, or you don't ever have to do uh, sterling on a CAC cell string if exactly. you, you do string. That's right. Yeah, and then I plus plus. I plus 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 plus, plus I. I. Doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. And then instead of num, we need to actually index into Nums. the thing. And then nums bracket, square bracket, so index into i. Cool. cool. Look at that. Works just like a regular array. Yep, and exactly. And we can just return total. Now, don't worry about why my editor is uh, doing this. Basically, my editor is trying to be super, super modern C++, but you know, 
we uh yeah, so so it's recommending us to use the four range for loop instead of uh the not c style for loop but then like as you can see it's much cleaner so we recommend that as well but it doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't have to use uh c style for loop here yeah and um i don't know let's just create a new list and see what happens so i can just copy that yeah, instead of it being double, good. yeah and we'll use different numbers this time maybe 3.0 to There's some nice numbers that we can actually calculate in our head so we know it's correct yeah and um okay we're going to change it to generic generic type to oh yeah that's that. good point cool yeah it works just like java array list so you should be familiar with it const double fold to so as you can see same name only thing changes that is that i change what i'm passing and everything just it just works and we're going to Apple fold too. Maybe I'll add in just like to say which one. Yeah. And, and uh, so if you want to print multiple things, just keep chaining on the um, output operator. You can do you can use as many as you want. So true. So true. Okay, let's uh, rebuild and rerun. Hey, look at that. Same thing. Now, um, by default. It will print this with when you're printing doubles. It will just print the double without any decimal places. If yeah. the double doesn't have any decimal places, but if we do have a decimal place, this should print six point five with some number of zeros. Yep. Oh no, no oh. zeros. Let's do that magic. Yep. Okay. You can change. You can mod. You can uh, customize okay. like all the printing format and stuff. But uh, we, we, don't need to, we, we don't need to get into that. Yeah. No. It, but the functionality is available for your own browsing later on. Okay, cool. So, I mean, this is pretty C++, right? We have like const correctness and we've got like these references and like these stood library mm -hmm. types and streams, which is what this stood C out thing is. Yeah. What is the, the last thing we want to talk about here quickly are function pointers because yeah. um, our windowing library G, GLFW uses function pointers for um, input and at some point, you'll probably want to be able to like press a key um, in your graphic pro graphics programs so that you can you know do things. And uh, well, you need function pointers for that, and we need to explain what they are at least basically. Yeah. So how it, are we going to introduce function pointers here, Kai? Well, right now it's only doing some, so we can have different functions to pass into our fold function, so it doesn't have to do some every time. Oh, that's um, so true. Yeah, but let's do. Let's just uh, define out function um, plus and multiply. Let's just do two in our own namespaces. OK, so okay. Yeah, well, so, now we're using this 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 yeah. namespace without a name. How is this useful? Um, so it's kind of like static functions in C. Um, so if you put stuff in anonymous namespace, how do you reference it in other files? You can't write because it doesn't actually have a name, colon, colon. Um, okay. So it's kind of like a hidden helper function. So every time you want to use a helper function, chuck it in your uh, name, uh, anonymous namespace in your file. So you can access in the same file, but no one else outside this file. OK, OK, cool. So this is like the C++ version of static functions, huh? Yeah. Oh, cool. OK, so let's, well, what's the, um, well, let's see. If we're going to add a, like a plus function, let's call it plus. I suppose it will return, well, we need two versions, but we will need an int version. and. Uh, Plus takes in what a um, int LHS and RHS. Now the reason here that we're not using const right is because these are copies. These are already local variables, right? So we don't need to worry about a const reference because we, no one else has access to this data, just us. Yeah, and int is small enough, so you don't have to write. You don't have to use a reference. Um, yeah, one of the reasons we use references for like vector is because vector. Is are really big and if you sometimes it can be really big if you have a lot of things in the vector um yeah so if you just pass with our references it will do a copy by default just like c so if you pass a and an array uh, array is a pointer in c but if you try to pass like a vector in c plus plus to a function it will do a copy so yeah. it will copy everything in the vector yeah i mean a vector is basically just an array that knows how big it is right yeah all right cool so so I've got these two functions now. Okay, uh, we'll, just do the, we'll just do the int version. To yep, these, these are the int versions. Cool. Um, okay, oh, so how I'm am I going to plug this all in? 
All right, let, let's just create a new new follow function. Um, yeah, so in yeah, copy copy the um in fold stuff, in fold stuff there. Yeah, and then make a I'll new one. I'll just comment this out, out, and then just copy it like that. Yeah, yeah. Have an actual um parameter. Okay. What's the okay. type of this parameter? So, type of this parameter. Um, so because we are passing it a, a function pointer, we need to specify the return type parameter, the parameter, and give it a star. So let's start with int. So that'll be the return type. Okay, we have an int. And then space. Yep. Um, bracket. Okay. Um, and put the name. So star, and then put the name inside. So the name that we want to call this parameter. Well, I guess since this is going to be like what what like operation that arithmetic yeah. operation that we use, we should call it maybe like op or something. Operation. Don't call it operator. That's a keyword in C plus plus. Okay. Operation. Yeah. Cool. Um. Yeah, and then we put the bracket again. So that will be now we are specifying the uh parameter. So it's an int. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Just like this. I hope I got this right. Every time I have to look it up because it's very complicated. I think this is right. Um, you know, because this is the do return. You not the, Simon, do you not put the space after in? I, I really do that. It looks cleaner. Uh yeah. style, Indeed. subjective style. So I, but okay. I think you're right, right? Because this is like this is this looks just like a function, right? We've got the return type, the name of the function, and then it's parameter list. I mean, aside from this, yeah. It looks exactly the same, right? It looks exactly yeah. the same. Just one thing to remember, you have to have the bracket. So if without the bracket, it will interpret it as the return type is in star. Oh, uh, like so you mean like this, right? So yes. it just kind of looks like this is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to me, this even looks like it's like a function declaration. You really yeah, got to use the uh, extra punctuation, otherwise bad things happen. Yeah, that's why I like to put a space before that. So, but that's okay. Um, All right, cool. Okay, um, cool. Well, I mean, I, now I need to like obviously copy this over into my function definition. Otherwise, it won't be the same. Cool. So now we have an operation and we can just literally call operation on total. And so total equal um, operation total uh -huh. one. Um, okay. Yeah, so plus equal is the same as uh, uh, plus itself. Oh, sorry, equal itself plus something else. So it will, instead of using plus equal, it will just be equal. Okay. Um, wait, yep. plus that makes equal. sense. No, this makes plus. sense, right? Because we can just, that our LHS which can just be total, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Total and then num. All right. That makes sense. So whatever this does, we'll calculate what the new total should be and it will update it. Okay, cool. So let's try this out with what we know, which would be our sum or what I call it plus. So as you can see, right, I've just said the name of the function. And not only does the C++ compiler know that this plus refers to the one inside of this anonymous namespace, but it also knows that this is, a, is when you just say the name of a function, it just means like a pointer to that function, like the address of that function. So you don't have to like do anything crazy. Although I believe you can also use the address of operator here and it's the same thing, but you know. May as well be super modern and just like say the name of the function, right? Yeah, it's just like a bossy array. So if you just refer to the array, it just mm -hmm. refers to the pointer thing to the first thing in the array. So the same as the function name. So if you just refer to the function name without the bracket, if you have a bracket, it's calling the function, but without the bracket, it's referring to a pointer to the function, which cool. therefore function pointer. Nice, nice. All right, let's run this and see what happens. All right. Hey, look okay. at that. All right, let's try multiplication. Okay, what's the, well, I think the answer will be the same though, because it's just one, two, and three, which <laughs> multiplies six. So uh, maybe we'll make this two, two, and three. Yeah. Uh, we'll just, wait, don't change it. Just make another function, maybe. Make another function call. Ah, uh, can't be bothered. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> just test both. I'm sure that people will understand that yeah, this yeah. should be 12. Yeah, all right. And lo and behold, we got zero. And that's probably because I did something wrong. What did I do here? Oh, because total starts off with zero. <laughs> Uh, start of one. Four, oh, this is this is interesting now because we had an assumption in this function that we yeah. could start the accumulator at um, some number. Yeah. So what we need to do 
I think is you need to add one more operator to one more parameter, right? And so we, we need, need to, to have parameterize the parameterize the in the yeah initial value, yeah. Okay, like this. Look, we'll just copy this now into it. Uh -huh. And uh, so now total. Well, I don't even need to declare this. We, right? don't, need this. we don't need this variable. Yeah, we just use in it, and yeah, we replace just fix up all the things. things. Um. And so now with this, our init is just one. Yep. Also, we run this. A12, just like we just like we expected. So that's good. Well, but I have a problem, Kai. This looks uh, this is so annoying to type out all the time. Isn't there an easier way for me to refer to a function pointer? Um we could use a using. Oh it's kind of okay. Way. Is it's that like, like a hash define? It's kind of like hash define, but uh, the C plus plus way of doing it. So okay. because hash define is literally done um, processed by the uh, C compiler preprocessor. So it does a copy and paste, which is not type safe. So uh, if you do using, um, so so think of it as hash define something equal to the thing that you want to define. Uh, so give it name, name, give it right. name. Okay, so let's call this, um, I don't know, um, op function. Op yeah, sure. Um, equal to yeah that decoration or that type decoration. Cool. And now I should just be able to do this like as if it was any other function, uh, any other variable where I can just say op function yeah. operation. And then, so, but but then with the um yeah we don't actually need a name here, so it will just be in star. Oh, yeah. So this is just now a type. So actually, even different to to um a, a hash define, this is kind of like a type def even. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. All right, cool. I mean, this looks much nicer now. Um, so I can also fix this up here, right? Although, because see, with a hash define, right, and type defs, again, that adds to the global namespace. But because this is inside of a, of a um, well, namespace. the CPP101 namespace, right? Then if I actually want to use this, I will have to say CPP101. Yep. Op function, look at that. And cool. uh, I can call this what operation again. Yeah. So, yeah, so, but wow. we didn't have to do that in um, in our HP file because we're in the same file and the, and the same namespace. So, which it also explains why we don't need to do that when we have anonymous namespace because you're oh, in the same okay. file. Right, right. So, this is really cool. Okay. I think we've covered everything. So, the only thing we haven't really covered, I suppose, is null pointer. Um, uh -huh. and basically null pointer is one of those differences between C and C++, right? So like hypothetically, let's say we wanted to make, oh, I don't know. What do we want to make? Maybe just like an instar, instar pointer. Yeah. And then equals to null. Equals to null. So this is a C way of doing it, right? Where null, oops, null is defined as, I think it's defined as like void star zero, if I recall correctly. I think that's how they define it, but yeah, something, like that. something like that. I think it actually also changes depending on what platform you're on. Um, null can be, I think I heard of a washing machine whose null was defined as like OX70 or something because it was like really? better for the platform. I, I don't know, but you know, this is very, very C style and um, you know, there's nothing wrong with the C style, but when you're in C++ land, then, you know, you got to do as the Romans do. So the C++ version of this is null pointer, just like this. And it is 100% exactly the same as null, except that it's all in lowercase and, you know, looks better in my opinion, but. Probably easier, easier to type because um, if you want to type up, case you have to hold the shift key or you have to do the cap logs, cap yeah. caps log and change yeah, it back. Exactly. And just to prove it, let's actually just like output what null pointer is. So it's yeah. the out um, pointer, oops. Uh, also, in addition to this backslash n, there's also a thing called std end line. And if you're if you come to really love this colon colon um, thing, which some people do, some people don't, uh, then you can also use std end line, and it's basically the same as a, a new line. But, yeah, the the only okay. difference is uh, end line will do a flush. So if you've done flushing before, probably in two five two one. So uh, yeah, you know you probably know that um, printf doesn't print immediately. You just print it just puts it to a buffer, and then if you do a flush. It will print the console immediately. So endline will make sure that this gets print like right the way. Mm. 
and that actually could have explained why these were printed in the wrong order. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So if we would have changed the uh, end line, probably will never change the order. Anyway, let's see what this prints. Zero. Yeah, just like zero. That. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, guys. Well, I hope um, that this was you know super informative. Um, if you've never done C plus plus, then you know the differences from C in the way that we've displayed here, I don't think are too different. Um, and basically all of this code will be available on GitLab. So, excuse me, you'll be able to look through all this. We'll, you know, add lots of documentation. So um, it'll be super, super clear. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Do you have any closing remarks, Kai? Uh, not really. Uh, have fun coding in C++. Thanks everyone. Yep, thanks everyone. See you later.